up there, Lucy. Ah. Lucy. Ah. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming to the press conference to announce what is quite definitely going to be one of the fights of the year. It's the first time that a big open air show has been on here at Elland Road since 1992. Henry Wharton topped the bill on that occasion. The two lads have been calling this one out forever, and I'm sure a lot of you follow their exchanges on social media, it's been a, a spicy build-up, to say the least. Lee is an outstanding champion. He's been champion since 2015. This will be the fifth defence of the IBF crown. <laughs> and as you know, Josh has been campaigning for this one. He wanted to be fighting here at Elland Road, and it is now happening. Please, can you just keep it down for the time being? Keep it down for the time being. And remember, this is a press conference. So please, let's keep the exchanges out there among the crowd. Keep it decent and give the guys a chance to say what they have to say. If they want to go at each other, that's fine. But we don't want you being involved. So please, let's keep it that way. Anyway, the promoter of this uh, terrific event, which I'm personally looking forward to immensely. It's going to be live on Box Nation and on BT Sport, and our promoter, of course, is Frank Warren. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us here at Ellen Road, home of Leeds United. Um, this, as John said, is a fight that we've been working very hard to put together, and we finally have got it together. We've got a fine champion in Lee Selby against Leeds' own Josh Warrington. You're allowed to cheer for Josh Warrington. He's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You'll never guess what camp I'm in. But anyway, um, Josh for me assigned me a while ago, and uh, you know, he's a, for me, he's a, one of the best guys I've worked with. He gets it, he understands it, and we've worked very hard to deliver for him his opportunity in his hometown, working with his dad, Sean. So we're delighted about that. And as I said, we've got a great champion here in Lee Selby, who's shown that he's got the balls to come here and come into the other guy's backyard. He's with his manager down the end there, um, Chris Sanigar. So we've got the ingredients here for a fantastic fight on the 19th of May here. Um, I think it's going to be a great atmosphere. I think we're more importantly we're going to get a great fight. I know you're all going to get behind your man. I know that um, all the leagues are going to turn out for Josh to come and get behind him and support him. And I know that uh, Lee is bringing, his, uh, bringing quite a contingent up from his own team. <laughs> <laughs> But he will be, I'm quite sure. But anyway, whatever happens, we know it's going to be a sellout. We know we're going to have a great event. We've got a great fight. And at the end of the day, no matter who the supporters are, once they're in that ring, they're on their own, and the best man's going to win on the night. And uh, obviously, we're all, we're all looking forward. I'm looking forward to hoping and hoping it's going to be uh, my man, Josh. Frank, you've, been, you've uh, promoted big fights for a long time now, including stadium fights, big occasions. This one's right up there, isn't it? It is. I mean, it's, it, you know, this is a fight that, in some ways, we forced this to happen. We've, uh, we've worked very hard to get it together. Um, Josh had to go through a, an eliminator to get him into the number one spot, which gave us the leverage to ensure that the fight happened. And event eventually, uh, Lee agreed to come here. So, you know, it, we've done everything we had to do to deliver it. But this is up there with, with competitive fights. It's a, a great division in the UK. You've got 
Um, over in Belfast, you've got Carl, Carl over there, Carl Frampton in a tough fight against Donaire uh, in April. But he, he comes through that. You know, this is, this is just great for, for, for British boxing and for British sport. So, you know, we're working hard, as I say, to make things happen. We've made this one happen. It is on. Well, thank everybody here, Mr. Adrani and uh, Angus Kerman at, um, at Leeds for helping us to get it together, and obviously BT and Box Nation and our sponsors, 32 Red and Foot Asylum and Rain and Steel. Without them, this wouldn't happen. But more importantly, without you guys, it wouldn't happen because you're the people who are going to come along, you're the people who are going to buy the tickets, you're the people who are going to watch it on TV, you're the people who make these events happen. It's important for us that you know, we, uh, we show you the respect you deserve in bringing these events into <coughs> cities like Leeds and giving the fans what they want. The home support for their champion, you know, he's, or champion to be, I hope. That's what we're all about and that's what it's about with Josh. As I say, you couldn't meet a better guy than him, you couldn't meet a nicer guy than Lee. But I think our guy's a nicer guy and I think our guy, hopefully, will, with the home support, prevail. I was checking on Odds Checker to find out what price these two guys are with the bookmakers who rarely get it wrong. And you can still, if you shop around, you can still get four to one against Josh Warrington, which suggests that this guy is a pretty hot favourite, making his fifth defence. You've got a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a, an idea of what the support's going to be like for Josh coming into the Lions Den here at Elland Road. Does it phase you? It won't phase me in the slightest. Not in the slightest. That's the plan, to try it, try it. Hey, hey, and nerve hey, and set him before the fight. Let him answer, let him answer his question. It won't phase me at all. And if, if you're banking on, like, before the battle, before, before the first battle goes, then another thing come. What, what, are you, what are your thoughts about the fight? I, I, think, I think it's a great fight. Josh Warrington's done, done everything asked of him. This time he, he actually gets a chance to win one of my titles rather than buy her off him. Buy, buy her off me, sorry. You know, when he was coming through, his previous promoter had to buy my titles off me. They paid me to give up the titles so he could fight with them, to, to build them up in front of all you lot. And, and then he, he wanted to put us in in a big fight together. He, he kept calling me out time after time after all his fights. We agreed the fight. And before I've, I've been told, he turned the fight down and then boxed on the same day against a different opponent. You tweeted that you thought it was going to be an easy fight. Is your thoughts still along those lines? It won't be easy. Not, no fight's easy. It'll be a tough fight, like all the rest of them. But I, I believe my, my class will show on it. Let's hear from uh, the man who I guess most of you have, have come to see here in Leeds. <laughs> is in the house, looking like a light heavyweight. Minus his cap and moustache. Listen, he's found a big razor. The, the fight's already sold. Stop, stop being a ticket teller. Uh, <laughs> trying to, trying to build oh, a fight. It's already ticket sold. Seller. Shut up. The ticket seller. Listen, destiny is taking its toll. You know, two years ago, you said that I'd never get me opportunity to fight for a world title. I'd missed, and that ship had sailed, and I wouldn't even win a limit. You said them words, but. I'm here. I won my eliminator. He's here. This, for me, I should be jumping up and down on tables, but you can't mess with destiny. And I feel like I've already done this. I've seen this many times. I've seen the build up and I know what it's going to be. And this is just meant to be. On a May 19th, I know a few things. There's going to be a royal wedding. There's going to be an FA Cup final. And Leeds is going to have its first world champion. <laughs> What about the fact, as I said to Lee at the beginning, that you know the, the bookies have got you as a real outsider? They're talking about four to one. Are you telling you telling your mates out here get your money on? Yeah, without well, doubt. Listen, I've, I've, you know it's a chance for boys to make a few quid. Um, I've, I've been uh, underdog before. It don't phase me one bit. You know, bookies say the bookies don't get it wrong, but they do many many times, especially with boxing. Um, and yeah, normally I, I'm, I'm odds on favourite when it comes into fights, uh, especially in Leeds Arena. But um, listen, Lee is not the big be all and end all superstar that you know, he thinks he is and everyone talks about. He's, his last four fights with his defensive titles, every one of them has been shaky and uh, he ain't making that fifth defence. Your dad, Sean, sitting alongside you, he's uh, 
organising your training and preparations for this as ever. Sean, tell us um, why you think Josh is going to win this. What are the weaknesses you see in this guy that maybe haven't been exploited so far? I'm not going to sit here and give all my secrets away there, am I, John? <laughs> give us a hint. No, we've got his, we've got his number. Listen, Lee's a very, very good fighter. I've never said any different. I don't play on Twitter. I don't play on Facebook. I don't go superimposing pictures on men in dresses and weddings and things, you know. I think if I were Lee, I'd be wanting to know what I'm getting for my money from these guys. Because I won't be paying people to play on there. I'd be getting on my business. And that's what we've done. You know, he's a good fighter. I've never said anything. I'm actually a family in Selby early days. But he's come along. Lee's a few years in front of us. We've come along behind him. It's not a case of buying titles. It's a case of he's moved on because he's a good fighter. And somebody else is going to come along and carry on where he left off. They always say about boxing, don't they, that it's about timing. Not only timing your punches, but yeah. timing to get the fights at the right moment. Of course it is, yeah. And I mean, all this business, he said, she said, turned it down. If we turned it down, why did we fight an eliminator to be sat here now? Don't make sense, does it? Chris, what are your thoughts on, what are your thoughts on this one as, as Lee's manager? Is he heading for his toughest night? Well, let me firstly say that I think I'm more excited uh, being here at Ellen Road than Lee is, you know, because I'm a great football fan and and uh, when I was a boy, Leeds United were a big, big team. You know? <laughs> and, and, let, and let me say, you know, you have this great affiliation with Wales. You know, John Charles is the best player you've ever had. Yeah. Gary Sprake played 500 times for you. The best goalkeeper you ever had. That Terry Yorath. You've had Gary Speed. That Brian Flynn, and he scored the winning goal against Manchester United, I think back in 81. You know, so, you know, that's the affiliation that you got from, from Wales, you know, and you treated those players with the highest respect. And I can assure you, on that Saturday night, after the fight, you'll treat Lee Selby from Wales with that respect, because you'll say, hey, that's was some fire. And no doubt, this will be the fight of the year. And, and uh, as regards the fight, Josh Warrington is a good fighter. He's come up the hard way, you know, on the small hall shows at first, and, you know, he's progressed. And now we have a stadium fight. This is all we've ever wanted for, for Lee Selby. And I'd like to thank Frank Warren and you know, John and, and BT for actually, you know, putting this on. And everybody here at Ellen Road, Leeds United. You know, we're very, very pleased to be here. Uh, you know, I'm said I'm so excited about Bounty. You know, like my pals naturally, they're all my age, 60. You know, and I'm going to be on there. I've been at Ellen Road. You know what I mean? And. Uh, and that's, you know, the, the respect that I've got for, for Leeds United, you know. I can name all your players. We had Terry Cooper down at Bristol Rovers, you know. Uh, playing, I think he played about 50, 56 times. He then became our manager. So, you know, there is this closeness. And when you've got a respect in sport, that's what I hope you'll show our man Lee Selby. Because he is a great fighter. Lee, when you get out into the ring, on the night of 19th of May, and you hear that noise, I mean, there's going to be a massive crowd here at Elland Road. How are you going to cope with that? I'll, I'll cope fine. You know, I've been the away fighter many times before. I boxed on what, my, my first TV appearance was on one of, one of Frank Shaw's, when, when I was a big underdog, and, and I knocked out the hot favourite, Stephen Smith. I went to Belfast with a hostile crowd, throwing things at me, swearing at me, booing at me, jeering me. But, but they were boxing fans. I found a, a great display of boxing, and they give me a stand, stand in the on the world. And whatever people might say tongue in cheek, you will be bringing plenty of fans up from Wales, won't you? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I thought the airport should have been Taxi. I, I, will, I will just say this, you know. I've, in the early days, I respected your Lee as a champion. I respected your accomplishments. And you might have had a bit more respect off the fans, but 
you, you must have bipolar or something, you must forget what you say because many times you've said in interviews and you've disrespected the Leeds fans, you know, you've disrespected my fans, calling them. I've, I've never disrespected them. No, you have disrespected them, just I, call them. I told them I'd silence them. Call them, them, call them, call them uh, uh, brainless football fans, you know, listen, call them what you want, they support their own. They turn out and the supporters of Leeds, wow. they come out and support me, they pay out their money and make sure they're all more the way. And the thing is, they're, they're here to support me. They're giving you your biggest payday and uh, they're going to see me take that title. And First if, of you, all, if you would have shown a bit more respect to them, then they might have shown it a bit back. But, like I say, First, first of all, you're not giving me like nothing. I, I'm, I'm the champion. And, you Listen, know, you wouldn't have gone anywhere else and got a payday like this. Listen, I've been with Al Heyman the last, the last few years. Hey, I'll even give a toss about you, to be honest. He pays, he pays <laughs> the, the biggest person. So if you think this person is like outstanding to me, it's not. <laughs> right, fair enough, fair enough. But you, listen, I know what goes on behind the scenes. And, and you know this is one of the biggest pay days you've had, right? And I'm just a ticket seller, but you know, I will say, like, on behalf of the fans, you can't go around, you know, slaying them, just calling them football, football fans. I'd rather have these behind me than anyone else in the world, than any other city or First of all, I didn't call them brainless football fans. Yeah, I said you support. Said that no, I said times. I said they're football fans. I didn't call them brainless. I called them football fans. Right. And I said I'll like, educate them on the night. I, give, I, give, I said I give a boxing, an educated boxing lesson. Yeah. And like I said, the difference between football and boxing. You might have boxed in other places before. Yeah, you might have gone to Belfast and box like some Martin Lindsay. You might have gone over to on to Carl oh, Thomas. So, but this yeah. is. This is different, you haven't experienced anything like this before. This is a different kind of if, if you're banking on atmosphere. Night, you're come. Listen, people in here, because of you slagging them off, they don't like you. Don't and they're going to be hanging over the balcony. They're going to be out the banisters. George, Chris, let's you, just talk. George, let me talk. just say let this. Let me just talk. Let me just talk. Let me just talk. Let me just talk. Those supporters hanging out, you are the Yeah, yeah. You are the one. What I'm saying is, you walk into one against one. And you know what it's like right when you have to have a fight? It's one against oh, one. Yeah, and this is what it'll be. You won't be able to help him. Listen, you won't be able to help him. I be able to help him. It's me and him. And I know I don't need no help. Josh, Chris says that they won't be able to help you. You, you tell us, Josh, what it's going to be like for you. I assume what it's going to be like for Lee when he goes out and feels a, a pretty hostile crowd. Listen, you when you get out and you know that they're on your side, how much will that lift you? Listen, his team didn't want this press conference open to public. You know, that just goes to show something. You know, this is, everything's going to be hostile, including, you know, the build-up, the way in the open workouts and the fight itself. So, what does that tell you? Not a confident fight. I'd happily go down to Cardiff and stand in front of all these fans. It's not a problem. It doesn't bother me. The thing is, when he's walking out in the tunnel and everybody's leaning over, screaming and shouting, bathing for blood, and when he gets in the ring, every time I land the punch and the crowd rolls up, I don't know how he's going to react to that. He thinks he knows how he's, how he's going to go because he's done it many times before, but he's never stepped in foot in a place like this before. Leeds is different and I've always said there's not a place and there's not a crowd like Leeds with a different breed. Let me say, let me say, in all the fights that Lee, Lee Selby's had, it's very, very few times that he's ever got caught caught clean. You know, so it, be, it will be interesting to see when he gets caught. Chris! Chris, uh, flyweight. Fernando Montiel gave him one of his hardest nights. Eric Cummer had him on his backside. And that fellow we boxed last time, that uh, fucking Mexican taxi driver, he couldn't miss him. He went knocking after seven rounds and he would throw a jab and he couldn't miss him. So what do you mean he can't get it? What fight are you watching these? Good matchmaking. <laughs> Lee, you're the you're the champion. You've had you've had this will be your fifth defence. Yes. And you've heard what Josh thinks about your, your weaker performances. What do you think was your best performance? Samir I've, I've had a few a few good performances, but we're still the, the, the best is, is yet to come. There haven't been a night where I where I think I've performed performed to my best. You know, I have some days in the gym where I'm just like swiping I'm, I'm untouchable. If I can bring that to, to to um, fight night, May the 19th, it will be a mismatch. Does his fitness, does his engine, you know, the high work rate, which you know he's going to bring, does that worry you at all? Not, not at all. We, we've seen me get pressured by many fighters. I've just outboxed them, outclassed them. 
if he comes steaming out with all, with all his fans roaring behind him, he just points my hands out, I'll, I'll box his head off. So, I mean, from my, <laughs> from my, from my perspective, it, it seems, you know, sort of kind, of kind of vaguely neutral that Josh's real chance is to make you insist on you having to fight three minutes of every round. He's not going to let you take any part of any rounds coasting. The, the last time I can remember where I really had to dig in and have a fight was um, back in 2011 against Stephen Smith. That, that was the last time I really dug in and I had a bit of a terror and we I mean, know what the result was there. Yes. Have you been in against anybody of this style? Anybody as or, or awkward and say, unorthodox as Lee? I've always come through the fights, whoever has been put in front of me, many times. And Lee has said himself that there were times when I would probably won, won the fights. I mean, you know, I've had eight foot Japanese fellas, I've had angry little uh, Spanish fellas in like Kiko Martinez. I've, I've mixed on all these different styles. I've had the awkwardness of Samir Munnman and uh, listen, on the on fight night, you know, we've been working on this for, for a while now. You know, he, he said for a while I'm obsessed with him. I have been obsessed with him, obsessed with winning that belt. I've been, I've been obsessed because it, with anything, I'm in a fight with him because he said that I never get that chance, I never get that opportunity again. Um, it, you know, he used to tell me that it would knock me out. That's changed now. He's just going to box me head off. You know, over, over week I've seen someone on social media that if, if you were 11 and a half stone and when it, well, whatever he walks around it, He'd bang me out, but he can't hit. Um, he can't bang at nine stone. Well, we fight at nine stone, don't we? So you know that's a lot of bollocks. Um, and, and, and I will say one thing: it's a good job we don't fight like just after the weigh-in because normally after the weigh-in it looks like an Ethiopian. So uh, you know it's a good job that we don't fight straight after that. Um, you know he, he talks about being this big banger and this and that. But he written that in the last fight. He written the Mexican clean. And the, the Mexican just stared and took it and kept on coming. So. You know, Lee's got his own idea about how the fight's going to play off, but like you said earlier, this is about timing. And since the first offer came about the first fight, I've had three fights since then. I'm wiser, I've matured a little bit more, I'm getting stronger and fitter. And uh, listen, it's going to be the best Josh Warren you'll see on the night. Lee, what does it mean to you over the last couple of years to have been able to walk around saying, yeah, I'm champion of the world? It's it's an indescribable feeling. It's, it's the best feeling in the world. You know, from, from a young age, like eight years of age, I was in the boxing gym and I had that dream of becoming world champion. No one believed in me except for myself. Even like my father, the big boxer fan, he didn't think I'm going to world title. But I just stuck at it, kept working and working, kept my, my, kept my, my um, like, like focus on what I wanted to achieve. And with the hard work and dedication and the right team behind me, I'm, I'm here and I, I'm hoping to reign for a long time. Frank's talked about what might happen after this, and clearly Nanito Denaire or Carl Frampton in the summer is a very real possibility. Have you, you, have you got any thoughts on that one? I, I think it's a great fight. Nanito Denaire is a little bit past his best, but he's a puncher, and a puncher is always dangerous in a fight. And they, they say that's the last thing to go in a fight. Yeah. So, um, obviously, I, I, this might happen to be on Carl Frampton, but anything can happen in boxing. If you come through this, if. Would you go to Belfast? Of course, yeah. I've, I've been there before. I've, I've boxed on the same card as Frampton when he won the European title. And you know, it was a bit of a hostile crowd, but I, I performed to my best. And um, I'd be happy to go back there. And likewise, likewise you, Josh. First, first of all, just tell us what it would mean after all your years in boxing to finally hold that belt to say, I'm a champion. Well, um, <clears throat> like I said earlier, John, um, this is destiny and I feel like I've been here before, so I'm just enjoying it. I'm taking it all in. Um, you know, this city deserves it. My, my fans deserve it. Um, you know, they've been supporting me for a long time, and they've and they've been craving for the, for a world title. So, so uh, to lift that world title on the on the pitch, you know, the home of the mighty white gods will be will be an amazing feeling. And uh, it's just start the next chapter. You know, there's there's other big fights out there. And uh, listen. Obviously, everyone wants to come and see me uh, punch Lee in the face, but um, you know it, this could be—it could have sold out with anybody. You know, it could have had Scott Quigg, could have had Carl Frampton here, and that—that uh, that is where I want to go after in an ideal world. Beat Lee, got a, I don't mind going to Belfast, um, taking uh, boys on a way day, and then we'll go smash here in Vegas and uh, go over to America. But um, listen, one fight at a time, and, and let's get that world title May 19th. Well, you'll have chances for head-to-head -head interviews, all the many television <laughs> cameras here and all the reporters who've come up here today. Uh, tickets, Frank, they're going to be available shortly, are they? They are. Um, 
They're all be available from uh, Leeds United box office, and they'll obviously give put the details out uh, on that. You know when they can actually have your fans get them and so forth, and obviously from the usual people like Josh and so forth. So that, those details will be put out very um, in the next 24 hours. I get the impression talking to you. I mean, I've known you for many years now, Frank. You're you're genuinely excited about this so being I'm, a being a huge event. I am, and, I, and I'm a big believer in home advantage. You know, you asked any, as we're talking about football, you asked any club, do you want to play at home or do you want to play away? You want to play at home, you want to be in front of your own fans. And I think it's really important for, for any boxer when they're fighting in front of their own fans, it gets more out of them. As Matt, they could be the greatest fighter in the world, but if you're fighting in front of your fans, you do not want to let them down. It pulls a bit more out of you. And that's what's going to happen on the night. It's going to make, and I think it's going to make all the difference. You know, People are underestimating uh, the bookmakers for sure, or under, underestimating uh, Josh, in my opinion. He's done everything that's been asked for him. He's not done it the easy way, he's done it the hard way, and he is where he is now. He'll be out there on the 19th of May, and I know 100% you're not going to get anybody more committed than him in bringing a belt home for his fans. Right, well, we're going to be doing head to head in a moment, and also all the pictures, but before then, and let's try and keep this relatively sensible. Questions, please, from the floor. The journalists. Journalists, preferably. Lee, you said you were going to run the were educating boxing lesson. What does that involve? It involves like a, a beautiful boxing display behind the jab, hit and miss. Does that mean it goes the distance? Same as his well, last fight. I'll, I'll probably break him down <laughs> round by round and then stop him a little. That's my prediction. Same as his last fight. So you're, predict you're predicting a stoppage? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sound confident, sir, pal. Sound confident there. Any more questions? Any more? Shout them up, please. Go on, then, Nick. The, regardless of all the hostility towards you, understand this. We 100% respect you and your abilities as a world champion. But understand this. The time is coming for you to hand out all the time. We'll have to wait and see. Time will tell. Time will tell. If for some for some reason I did I did lose, anything can happen in boxing. If I did lose, I'm, I'm gracious in victory. I'll be gracious in defeat. Right then. Well, I'll tell you what it is. Get ready. Make sure that you've got your investments done. Make sure that you look after your money because we're coming. We're coming. Well, that's it. We. It will be here. There won't be no we. There won't be no we. We won this one. Yes. You've got till May now. Do you think he'd be able to grow a proper moustache, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> well, Josh, you could have one. How can you talk with a face like that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't hear me. Hey, Josh. He's got a fight. Any, <laughs> Any more educated questions? <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard Jamie Spade not chatting, sparring. Well, let me tell you something. J Jamie Spade <laughs> was in his camp, sparring a partner, actually boxed him. Yeah. Ask him what he thinks. He'd he been, he been in. I think he, he might have spied a round or two with me. That's, that's the only thing about the fight. Jimmy, Jimmy's got an opinion on everybody. Everybody, and I mean everybody. Question here. Let's just say, uh, if, if it goes to draw, yeah. where's the next fight going to be? If it's a draw, we <laughs> rematch and we'll have it here again. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. It's going to be a draw, mate. It's going to be a draw. Sounds like September. September. I, 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 would, I would just say, um, no, thank you to Frank. Um, when, when, when we signed with him, you know, one thing I said that wants to happen is, uh, is, you know, world title, and if you can, Ellen Road is delivered. I'd like to thank my dad and the rest of the team. You know, they know who they, they know who they are. We'll be able to get this over the line, and, and Leeds United for getting behind one of the own and, and supporting us, helping us make this dream. Listen, this is the one what we've been talking about for for years. When I've been walking about streets of Leeds, and you know, folk have been coming up and saying, let's get the big one, Ellen Road, and this is an event what's gonna capture the OC and Leeds fans all around the world, so tell your mates, tell everyone, make it, let's make it hostile, let's make it something special. And so you turn around and you can say in years to come, I was there on May 19th when Leeds saw its first world champion and uh, let's fucking have it. Come on! <laughs> any more? Any more questions? Any more questions? Yeah.
Let's not talk about looks, come on. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, can I just ask, uh, in terms of preparation, are you going to do anything different for Josh Warrington? No, I'm, I'm just going to treat it, treat it as every, every other fight, does same he, as any other fight. Does he bring anything that concerns you at all? Is it, <laughs> your knowledge of world level and where you've been, does he yeah. bring anything at all that actually... Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very experienced. You know, I've had maybe 27 fights. Only only nine of them have been non, non-title fights, you know. I, I'm making my... My fifth world title offence. This is my sixth world title fight. So I, I got a lot of experience. I've done it time, time and time again. So, so I know what to do. I know what to do in the training. I know what to expect from from Josh Warrington. Even before um, he became world champion, you know, we were going to to the USA. He was going to Los Angeles. He was sparring in those Mexican gyms against all comers. You know, so we would treat this fight with the highest respect. We'll go over there. And me- mentally and physically, Lee Selby will be ready for, for Saturday night, May the 19th. I think there's another question down here, yeah. Uh, Josh, how do you make sure that you don't get overwhelmed by the occasion? Obviously, top family, but, you know, our style of the paper. Questions, how do you make sure, Josh, that you don't get overwhelmed yeah, by the occasion? Listen, I feel, I feel like I'm repeating myself here, but when you... I feel like I've been in this moment pictured myself any time I've been on pitch, any time I've gone down to watch Leeds, I've always pictured myself being in there, so I feel like I've lived it already. It's not going to be no new to me. I walk out um, in front of thousands at, at the arena, and I have learned, I have learned from there, like one of the last times Lee were down there, they were ringside, and I had a bit of a bad night off this, because I, I did get carried away a few years ago, but I've learned from that, and I've learned from, uh, you know, dealing with the pressure, dealing with the fans, dealing with the hostility, and, you know, experience is the best teacher, so uh, I'm going to enjoy the occasion. I'm going to enjoy walking down that tunnel and, and walking onto the pitch and getting in the ring. But as soon as uh, that first bell goes, I'm going to be switched on and 36 minutes to, to win that world title. Anybody else? Yes, at the back. Most likely, yes. Thank you. <laughs> In boxing, there's always got to be a good guy and a bad guy. All right? So So Lee, so Lee Selby, if you want, we'll, we'll play the bad guy. And Lee Selby will promote this, this fight as much as we can. So you've got as many lead supporters as you can get. The Soul Crew will be coming. Any, any more? Okay, well that's about it then.